These polyphenols are the antioxidants that per the protection of the, the plant um, that gets transported into the oil. And these antioxidants and polyphenols, they deteriorate by 50% in the first six months after pressing. So most olive oil in the U.S. comes by slow boat. You don't know how old it is. Um, so that's a lot of times the issue is it's, it's age. So a lot of times it's kind of rancid before it ever gets in the bottle. TJ, so Thank amazing you. to have you here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to, do, to be here and talk about olive oil today. Um, there's so many like myths around olive oil and, and, and shopping tips. And uh, just it's just one of these topics that um, I'm madly in love with and can't wait to share my passion and expertise with, with you and, yeah. and your, your viewers. So thank you for having me on. Ladies, for those of you watching or gentlemen, but mostly ladies in this group, we'll, we'll share it with the gentlemen later. <laughs> TJ Robinson, TJ, I met you and your wife, I would say probably now two to three years ago at a Mindshare yes. event. And yes. you guys caught my eye. I mean, number one, you were giving me a bunch of amazing olive oil. So yes, I want to be your friend. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but because honestly, you are known, I'm looking at your bio right now, you're known as the olive oil hunter, which I absolutely love. And you really truly are one of the most respected authorities on all matters olive oil. So known for his platinum palette, he's one of the few Americans invited to serve as a judge in prestigious Italian olive oil tasting competition. These days, he's dedicated to importing rare, fresh pressed olive oil, the most flavorful and healthiest extra virgin olive oil on the planet until now virtually impossible obtain year round in the United States. All of his oils are independently lab tested and certified for 100% purity. That to me means everything. My viewers know I'm all about getting the toxic crap out of your lifestyle. And one of the most harmful things when it comes to food and toxicity is toxic oils canola oils and vegetable oils. I mean, these are the things. Absolutely, absolutely. They, Especially with all the prepared foods today. Right. They hide so much crap in prepared food. Especially like, you know, bottled salad dressings, you know, laden with sugar, mm -hmm. lots of bad fats. Like I definitely want to talk about the only vinaigrette recipe you'll ever need uh, today. So they're like, they're, they're, let's, you know, let, let's definitely work through this. But I appreciate the yeah. the intro. You, you made me blush. I, I'm very, very lucky and very blessed and and um, spoiled that I get to travel around the world and I get to work with small family farmers, um, people who really have no access to the American market to bring incredible olive oil to the U.S. So uh, it, it's it's uh, really a, an adventure that we go on as a club. And and you know you've been part of the club for a while, Andrea. And so you know you know about yeah. all the adventures we have in our in our newsletter and and all that sort of fun stuff but you know there's there's so much information out there about olive oil and it's so confusing when you're standing in the grocery store and you look at all these labels and you try to figure out which one to buy you know so yeah. i can't wait to to inform your folks on how to really assess you know and know what quality of olive oil is so, yep and we'll get into that because honestly i'm learning here right because yes, when i met yes. you guys and like you said you with the subscription you kind of send out all the the newsletters and it's so fun reading it and you put so much much work into it. Sometimes I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh, like, right? It's a whole nother team just doing that. But I knew once I realized how toxic most oils are, vegetable oils, and like you said, they're hiding in everything. The other day I bought um, organic seasoning. It was okay. like seasoning for my fish. And okay. I looked at the label quickly. It was like, oh, it's organic. It's a mix, uh, mix of herbs. Cool. Grabbed it. Yeah. Got home and I look and it had canola oil in it. I'm like, oh, come no. on. Right. No. So it's really... <laughs> It's, yeah. it's unfortunate, but it's hiding everywhere. Um, we're lucky that olive oil is one of those good oils that we should yes. be um, feeding ourselves filled with benefits. Yes. So 
Can you just tell me about you and your wife? How did you guys even get into this? Why olive oil? What's what's your background? Well, most people don't realize that olives are fruit. So they think of them as a, you know, I, I don't know what, but olives are fruit. And so olive oil, when it's treated really, really well, can be almost a, akin to a fresh squeezed juice, like a fresh squeezed fruit juice. And so that's always been our my mission. Um, so backstory is I'm an ex-professional chef, a baker, uh, have a hospitality degree. So I was very much like on the restaurant tour path. Um, and I got a great job in New York City working for the Food Network and got an opportunity to travel to Sicily. And on this trip to Sicily, I was invited to a harvest party. I, a, an olive harvest party. And Sounds very I grew, exotic. Yes, I so said I grew up <laughs> in Asheville, North Carolina. Like I know what I what I like a fall harvest mm-hmm. party is like. And you being from the Northeast, you've attended quite a few of these too. Where you know we go there, we go to the orchard, we see the apples, we see how beautiful they are. We we take the apples and we taste fresh cider. I remember the first time when I was a kid, I realized the difference between apple juice and apple like fresh cider, and I was like. I'm sold. Well, the, for Sicilians and for Italians in general, um, they have the same type of fall festival. One time of year, they pick the the olives and they um, take the fruit to a community mill, typically. Um, and that that mill that they go to, that where they press the the fresh fruit, the olive fruit, into olive oil, is a huge celebration. They see cousins. They see, um, you know, a people from their past from their childhood their teachers people from the village they swap stories they toast bread and what they do they they, after working all day in the fields gathering their fruit in the small small bins they they carry these and they wait their turn in line and it's like that it's very social um so i was i was invited to this harvest party and i attended and i helped this family mateo and his family harvest all the the fruit they taught me what you really want to pick it when it's super green because then the had the oil has a lot of flavor, uh, a lot of antioxidants and polyphenols and bitterness and spiciness. Mm-hmm. And, and so I learned a lot just on my first visit. Um, but then we went to the mill, we hung out with the, with these people in the community that were, it was just so much fun. And then um, it was our turn. It was our turn. The oil, our oil was going to come out. So we each had a cup uh, similar to this. And we walk over to the spout, the, the spigot, where the uh, coming out of the centrifuge is the oil and I put my um, cup in there and just to pause because as an American I thought I knew what olive oil tasted like I was a professional chef I had been around the globe eating like I thought you know I had a pretty good handle on what olive oil is anyway I look in my glass and I see this bright green look like wheatgrass juice um, and this aroma that was coming out of the cup like I'm like this is olive oil like I had never tried anything or tasted anything like I had an epiphany right there and I tasted it and it was bitter and it was spicy and it was real like it was the first time I had tasted real olive oil and it just you know blew me away that someone you know an agro mafia I I went on to figure out and learn about the agro mafia in Italy and how um olive oil in general was very controlled and the US back in those days in 2005 was really the dumping ground for really bad olive oil because Americans Mm -hmm. didn't know what good olive oil tasted like right we didn't grow we only grow a small amount of olive oil that we consume in the US about three to five percent in those days it was even less now in California it's coming up but most olive oils imported so yeah I was royal upset and I immediately knew uh, from that first sip on that my mission in life had to be to get this product out in the world and educate consumers so that's the that's a little bit of the backstory and how it all started in in uh, Sicily and and you know me learning too what what good olive oil should be yeah isn't that crazy because same thing okay right I got into the health industry I learned olive oil's good 
And yes. I try to look for, and we'll go into, and you could actually answer it right after this. Yeah, sure, sure. When you're looking for olive oil in the supermarket, especially yes. if you're shopping in a healthier supermarket, you will yes. have better choices, right? So say you're yes. spending in Whole Foods or Sprouts, That's and right. then you have non-GMO, you have the organics, you have, I was always told, go for, if you could do non-GMO or organic, I always yes. recommend that with people yes. for most foods because of all the GMOs yes, and course. the pesticides of and course. glyphosates. Yes. But then- for olive oil, I said, look for extra virgin olive oil, cold press was like my go-to that I knew about, yes. right? And I yes. always purchased this and that's what I use. And yes. I remember when I got your first shipment of your oils, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll go through how you guys really travel around the world. I'm kind of jealous and want to come with you one year <laughs> and travel to different countries to get the harvest for the quarter. But it was, I, I tried yours and I it had the same kind of epiphany like you did. Yes. I tried, I'm like, Oh my God, my olive oil <laughs> tastes like just like fatty water almost. Fatty water. Yes, yes, exactly. No, <laughs> I was no, like, totally. this is so much totally. cooler and more totally. enjoyable. And and the and the you know fresh taste of my salad. I was like, this is awesome. This guy yes. is onto something. Yes. So tell yes. us like those those myths or like what are we looking for? Sure. So always, of course, um, you know, buy from a reputable store, a store that has a high turnover. Um, because you there are a few things that damage olive oil. One is light one is temperature and two and uh, three is time light temperature and time so okay. I would never ever buy olive oil in a clear bottle because sunlight kills and fluorescent lights and shopping stores will really kill the olive oil almost immediately so mm -hmm. always look for dark glass keeps the uv light out and protects the oil also, the other tricky thing that most um, people who sell olive oil commercially do is they're infamous for not putting a harvest date on the bottle. They'll oh. put an expiration date on the bottle, which really has more to do with when it was put in the bottle. It could have been harvested a year ago, placed in the bottle, and then dated out two years or three years. So wow. you don't really know what the harvest date is. So one very important thing is to always look for a harvest date. So you should see like this one, this is ours. It says Italian harvest season 220. So 2020, this was, yep. this was just, you know, harvested a couple months ago. Um, so always look for a harvest date, glass bottle, harvest date, high turnover. Um, but really, you know, olive oil is one of those things, you know, uh, Americans a lot of times will buy fancy bottles and just because it looks pretty, we buy with our eyes and, and a lot of times that it, it'll say like a beautiful Italian name mm -hmm. uh, and it'll have the colors of the Italian flag and it'll say extra virgin and then when you actually read the small print on the back you'll see it's actually made um, it'll have like these little initials on it that show you the countries of origin and some bottles may have even six countries of origin all in one bottle so you know when you're buying something like that you're not buying a lot of love you're not buying a lot of care you're not buying a lot of attention you're buying a commodity product so one thing you want to look for is single estate olive oil single origin single estate um, that could be really good if you happen to live in california taste them at your farmer's market get to know your farmer uh, if you're like the rest of us in the u.s you got to educate your palate so i know educating our palates is something we want to do today yes. so i'm going to tell i'm going to tell you guys how you could take your olive oil bottle out of your pantry and try it and assess it and i'm gonna tell you show you and tell you how to know if it is a high quality high polyphenol uh, product because there's a lot of talk of these polyphenols in the media and these antioxidants and they're really identifying the compounds in olive oil that give you the benefits of the mediterranean diet um, they've really zeroed in on these polyphenols and these polyphenols are the antioxidants that per, the protection of the the plant um, that gets transported into the oil and these antioxidants and polyphenols they deteriorate by 50 percent in the first six months after pressing so most olive oil in the u.s comes by slow boat you don't know how old it is um, so that's a lot of times the issue is it's, it's age so a lot of times it's kind of rancid before it ever gets in the 
the bottle. Uh, and then that can, you know, cause its own health problems, right? No one wants to put right. rancid, you know, products in their body. So, but it's, it's right. Things turn rancid over time. Yes. Especially in general facts. with food, they're, they're putting so many chemicals in our food to keep the food shelf stable, right? So that's why we always say stay, uh, you know, get fresh, go to the farmer's market. And with your olive oil, you guys go and you have this new batch every quarter. Yes. And I yes. and we'll get into yes. how fresh it is, which yes. is so cool. Yes. And this is still from the last quarter, right? The Italian yes. one was from is, last quarter the, of yeah, 2020. So yeah, this was harvested in November. Um, mm -hmm. There's There are three different um, bottles in this shipment. There's always a mild, a medium, and a bold. In okay. Italy alone, there are about 550 olive varieties. So even this, uh, the one we're going to taste today, which is the, my, my medium oil in the trio the, and, and mild, medium and bold refers to their level of spiciness and intensity, okay. intensity. So milder oils go with milder foods, typically ah. better. So milder, mm -hmm. the milder oil in the trio is great with chicken and fish and lighter vegetable soups and things like that. Um, and I like to think of this style of olive oil as a sauce that mother nature made for you. It, I don't think of it as necessarily a fat or something right. to keep something from sticking. It's a, it's a flavor component. Mm -hmm. So one way I often will describe fresh oil versus store-bought oil is store-bought oil I would would think of as like dried herbs, like dry, mm. think of dried basil, dried oregano, yep. like kind of, you know, you can tell once they had a lot of life in them, um, but you know, they're just kind of a muted version. Mm -hmm. uh, and fresh pressed olive oil is very much like fresh herbs. So think the pungency of uh, Thai basil or think the, the spiciness that you might get in some mint. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know how it's just the difference between dried and fresh. Well, fresh olive oil is very much like, like fresh herbs. So any dish you would make that you would want to top with fresh herbs, you can also top it with fresh pressed olive oil and it'll bring the dish alive the same way um, uh, that a fresh herb would. So awesome. anyway, I, uh, we're going to talk about how to taste. So we have a cup. Andrea has a cup. I have a cup. Now, professional olive oil tasters. Now, don't taste this yet, Andrea, because I want to explain the process. I'm way ahead so, of the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait for me. <laughs> wait for me. Uh, I know. I want to smell it too. But the, the first step um, is um, most people don't, they a lot of times will buy olive oil on color. And color is not an indicator of olive oil quality. Um, all these different olive varieties that are out there very much kind of like wine where you have Merlots and Cabernets what's the same with different um, olive varieties in Italy like I mentioned okay. there are around 550 olive varieties in Italy each one has different levels of bitterness and spiciness and greenness um, but uh, professional tasters taste in blue cups um, I'm not tasting Ooh. in blue today and the reason we do that is to disguise the color ah. because color is not an indicator of quality again color not an indicator of quality so I'm going to take my first step is I'm going to take about a tablespoon of olive oil and put in the bottom of my cup and you could do this okay. at home if I'll you have your more. own olive oil. Yeah, that, I that's perfect. I must say the that's, color is nice though. It is, it's beautiful. <laughs> that's because this is from very green fruit and it has a lot of a lot of flavor. So it's a, like a concentration of what's coming from, from the sun. So, okay, so step before we taste, as a professional mm -hmm. taster, you warm the oil with the palm of your hand. We, we place the cup in the palm of our hand. Mm -hmm. And what that does, that warms the oil. And then we, we put our hand hand over top. And what we're doing, we're warming the oil and releasing all the aromas. You guys can see yeah. that there. Um, so I do that for, I don't know, about 20 seconds. It really warms the oil. And then I want to close my eyes and I want to smell. I want to put my nose in the cup. And what I'm smelling, I'm smelling fresh cut wheatgrass. I'm smelling arugula. I'm smelling basil that I've rubbed in the palm of my hand. Like wow. I want to look for what's called fruitiness. So as a professional taster, the first step is we assess fruitiness. So is it fruity? Does it have a beautiful aroma? Not only a fruit, but other things like we mm -hmm. talked about lettuce and, and um, artichoke or almond. Like there's a whole lot of descriptors, but the 
the other thing we look for is what we call mm. defects. Mm. So anything that happens in the olive oil making process, if they left the fruit in the field too long, if they didn't press it fast enough, if the mill wasn't clean, okay. depending on the quality of the fruit, all of those will, will end up as an aroma in the final product. So as a professional taster, you learn to assess the nose and the palate, and it'll tell you the complete story from the olives of the olives life. It'll tell you the life story just from the smell. So That's with so this cool. one, <laughs> this, this one, is totally clean, totally fresh, totally beautiful. So we want to smell fruitiness. And when I say fruitiness, again, all those green things, garden, like Andrea, what, what, before we even taste it, what do you, what do you kind of smell in there? Do you? Okay. I don't know if I'm crazy now. I feel like <laughs> you not. being a chef, you have an advantage, right? Of like yeah, using your nose. Sometimes people are like, what does this taste like? I'm like, oh, I don't know, like fruity, right? So yeah, right, I'm right. not an expert, but I almost smell like ripe, like green bananas or something. Yes, Am I crazy? Yes. No, that's a great descriptor. And absolutely, a lot of people get that one. And and I and very yeah, this that I love it because what you're smelling is a little of that sweetness in there, mm -hmm. but it's also very green. So the next step is we take, like I said, I have about a tablespoon mm -hmm. in there. I'm gonna take probably yeah. about a half a teaspoon and I'm gonna sip it and I'm gonna kind of chew on it a little bit on Ooh. my palate. So it coats my palate nicely. I hope you guys are joining us and doing this with what you have. Mm. Mm. So what I'm noticing right away on my palate is bitterness. Mm. That bitterness tells you that it's from really green fruit. And green fruit is where the health benefits are. Uh, That's that crazy. And I say bitterness, I think of like over, like a slightly over brewed green tea. I mm. think of wal walnut skins. I think of um, like a Belgian endive or arugula. Like this mm -hmm. is really good for your um, for your gut biome. Uh, Dr. Oh, yeah. Sarah Ballantyne talks about how wonderful olive oil is for your hair, for your skin, for your gut biome. You know, mm -hmm. it's known for brain health as well. But what we're tasting here is this bitterness. And these are, this tells you it's from really early harvest fruit and it's very good. And then the next thing you want to look for, so fruitiness, bitterness, and then the third item we're looking for is spiciness yes, now i, I noticed that, that for some reason from you <laughs> yeah. i knew that from you yes, but i'm like yes, yes. yes. it's like i'm well, causing myself exactly well the spiciness so i've got this tickly kind of pinch going right on here. in the back of my throat. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. And what that is, is that's the oleocanthal. That is the polyphenols and the spiciness. This is mm -hmm. how you know it's fresh. So if your olive oil isn't spicy, Tuscans will say, I, I remember tasting fresh oil around their meals, their mills, olive mills, and they will uh -huh. be like, TJ, be careful. That's a three cough oil. And I'm like, three cough oil. They're like, yeah, it's a one cough oil a two cough oil or a three cough oil, depending on how bold and spicy it is. And I'm like, oh, really? I love that. I'm going to steal that expression and tell everyone to ask, you know, when you assess your fresh mm -hmm. olive oil or olive oil, you want to look for that spiciness. And that tells you it's fresh. And that again, you lose a lot of that over the first six months. So it's important um, to, to make sure that you have that spiciness. And then in the end, you just want to kind of assess overall, how, how does the oil, is it in integrated? Does it leave a really nice, pleasing flavor? And remember, we're tasting these straight. We're not actually putting these on mm -hmm. food. We're tasting them like professional tasters. A lot of this kind of bitterness and, and a lot of the spiciness really dissipates when you put it on food. If you, and, and when I say on food, I, I think of simply steam some green beans for Andrea for dinner. Steam, uh -huh. Well, you're doing a cleanse right now, but if you were simply steam some some French green beans, you know, the mm -hmm. ones you buy from Trader Joe's, you know, just take them out, throw them in the steamer basket, um, st lightly steam them, place them on a plate, drizzle them with a little fresh pressed olive oil and add a little high quality salt, a little crispy mm -hmm. flaky salt and just serve them. They're going to be incredible. You have all of three ingredients, green beans, high quality salt, olive oil. That's all you need. It's the same with broccoli, the same with sweet potato, the same with 
any other kind of green vegetable or any mm -hmm. other vegetable, just think of olive oil as like a sauce and, and, and like flavor enhancer because you get yep. the bitterness, you get the fruitiness, you get the spiciness. Like it somehow adds like, it's, it's like a, it's a health hack and also a flavor and cooking hack, which yep. I think really makes it a very special marriage in the, in the kitchen. I love it. And I love what you said, because what I'm tasting right now is not usually what I taste when I have it on my food. So I like that right. you brought that up because it's yes. almost, this is like, I wanted to think, I don't want it to be that spicy or hurt my throat or be that bitter. But when you put it on food, it's so amazing because just the flavors blend together. So yes. can you tell us when it comes to cooking? I think yes. most people use it. I, you know, I always tell people we don't want high heat olive oil. That's right. you know, no, no bueno. Um, and most people put it on after salad dressing, yes. like you said, drizzle on, on vegetables. And I could totally eat green beans. I'm, yes. I'm on a parasite cleanse. Oh, so I can't, I okay. can't drink too much of this because I'll be running out of here and leaving <laughs> you on your, okay. <laughs> on your own. Okay. Okay. But um, yeah. it's when it comes to actual cooking. So we know yes. no high heat, if you could confirm yes. that, of course, yes. um, how else when it comes to, can you toss the vegetables in the olive oil, put it in the oven? Um, what are your recommendations? Yeah, it's really interesting you bring this up because there, I don't know who started this myth that you cannot cook with high quality olive oil or extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was like the coconut oil commission or if it was the canola oil guys or who started this. But if I took you into the kitchen of a 99 year old Italian grandmother, guess what? only oil she will have in her kitchen that she fries she deep fat fries she uses for baking she uses only olive oil that's it you're only going to find one olive oil and that's what they use for everything mm -hmm. grilling marinating vinaigrette sauteing mm -hmm. yes it is very important to start with a high quality olive oil right. because the higher the quality of olive oil the more antioxidants it has in it there is a great tip for you i agree you should not let an olive oil sit and smoke on a burner okay. but if i'm cooking with olive oil like i'm making my morning eggs for example i do like medium uh medium low mm -hmm. um and what i do and, and this is true for all sauteing um, um, or yeah, really anytime I'm heating the oil, I heat my pan up first. So okay. I turn my burner on, I turn my, put my pan on there and I let my pan get up to temperature then, and, and pay attention to this order, hot pan, oil, just a couple seconds, food, hot pan, oil, food. And the reason I do it in this order, I don't put the pan on the stove, add the oil, walk away to chop my whatever while my olive oil sits there and becomes junk. You know, like right. I really, I try to protect the oil by adding it at the last minute. So um, that's the, the cooking tip. And yes, you, you, you know, it's but olive oil, unfortunately people love the health benefits and that's been so widely marketed as being so healthy that there's a lot of fraud in the industry mm. um there was a there was an article in the new yorker going back 10 years ago called the slippery business of olive oil and uh -oh. that led to a book called the the uh, book called extra virginity that kind of followed the slippery business of olive oil back and back into the Roman times. Um, and now how, you know, smart marketers, they got into counterfeiting olive oil, uh, taking advantage of American consumers. So there's a lot of, unfortunately, there's a lot of fraud out there. So you got to learn how to educate your palate to know what fresh olive oil and good high quality olive oil tastes like. Um, and, and also finding a good source. Um, and like our oil, we send it to a third party lab. And of course I know the farmers, right? They're, they're right. my friends. I've been doing this since 2005. Yeah. So tell <laughs> so, us as you're, as you're saying yes. this, uh, just to like wrap things up this way, sure. I think that's perfect. Sure. So your fresh press olive oil club, right? Yes. You, yes. you said, I have to do this. I have to educate. Yes myself give us the process of if somebody's getting their oils and will well it's it's wellnessoliveoil.com if you guys want to check yes. it out tell me the process so the italian olive oil 
Yes. Go so people, pe but yeah, so people join the club and what happens is every quarter, my members get three bottles of olive oil. So this is a size, this is the large size. Mm -hmm. um, and and when you, size. people, well, what we want people to do is to join the club through your, and you can't get this on the homepage. They have to go through URL. They can get a sample bottle when they join the club for a buck. And nice. what I want them to do is to take a couple tasting glasses and I want you to taste yours at home versus fresh pressed olive oil. I want you to see and understand the differences. Mm -hmm. To me, the, the proof's always in the pudding. I really appreciate you doing that and educating your palate because it helps me get the word out. Uh, so that's how people join the club. They all start with the dollar bottle. Uh, and then every quarter they get three oils, a mild, a medium, and bold mm -hmm. from wherever the harvest is happening globally. So the immigrants who left the Northern hemisphere from Spain and from Israel and from Italy, they took and stitched into the hems of their clothing, small olive trees and olive um, branch cuttings. And they hopped on the new, on the boat to the new world, Chile, Australia, Argentina, to start and California to kind of start their new lives there. And what they needed was olive oil as part of their religious ceremony. So these tree cuttings, they started to grow. So now mm -hmm we have a whole nother harvest that's opposite the Mediterranean in the Southern Hemisphere. So in May, they're harvesting in Chile and Argentina. So it's super cool um, that we're able to get following the global harvest, mm -hmm. the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, we're able to get four different shipments per year fresh from the hemisphere where the harvest is happening. So that's really cool. It's like an adventure in taste. So people get a pressing report they meet the producers. They learn about how to cook the oil. You can see <laughs> a little bit yep, inside there. Um, and really, it's just a lot of fun. You know, it's the whole stories of the families, why I selected these oils, mm -hmm. um, and, and what's so unique and special about these oils. And we fly them here by jet. I Don't let me forget to say that. We fly them here by jet. So I was going to say, don't you <laughs> ship them out within about 30 days? Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, it's yeah, it's, it's super fun fresh. It's a, it's a race, you know, and COVID yeah. has been, had its own challenges, but it's been, it's been a lot of fun, yeah. um, you know, uh, just upping the ante, but um, getting, having these oils in your kitchen can really just add a whole new dimension to your cooking uh, and be a health, a, a backbone of healthy cooking and mm. a whole new flavor. So anyway, I, you know, I know you use it in your kitchen, Andrea, um, you know, continue to watch the group and learn how she uses it in her kitchen and be sure to tag us when you're using your your fresh pressed olive oil so your folks know how you're using it at home. I know in you know salad dressings and drizzling and over grilled meats or as a marinade on fish before you, nice. you grill it or bake it. So yeah, there's there's just a million and one ways to use olive oil, especially super high quality olive oil. That's amazing. Well, <laughs> thank, you. thank you. I don't want to keep you here too long. I know we had a time, but um it was such a pleasure having you. And since thank we can't you. see each other in person and in conferences, at least I get to see you this way. <laughs> Yay. And thanks for educating me right. and my audience. Okay. Um, I'll thank make you. sure to grab your recipe that you mentioned at the beginning from Ooh, Megan about the, yes, yes. Is it the only balsamic you need or vinaigrette, the only vinaigrette, the only vinaigrette recipe you'll ever need. I'll be sure to share that with you guys. Perfect. It uses a lot of olive oil, of course. Yeah, so. Of course. And I'll, <laughs> yes, of course. I'll add that. I don't want to forget that because yes. I'm always looking for good ones and it could be, yes, it could yes, truly be yes. so simple if you're using the right ingredients. So Absolutely. TJ, again, thank you. Adore Beautiful. you and your wife. And oh, I will talk you. to you soon. Thank you. Ciao. Rivadechi. Ciao.